everybody, welcome back to my channel. So, I know, it's crazy, you see me today. The mystery is over, I know. Um, being in quarantine, I don't have much to do, so I thought I'd get, you know, camera ready and um, unbox for you today. So, I'm super excited because I have the Suzy clean acrylic kit that she collabed with Joy and Mia to, um, I'm guessing create and also sell. So, there has been a little bit of, I guess, drama or maybe some tea with this set or with this, um, this collection, I guess. I don't know. If any of you haven't heard of it, um, there's really not too many reviews about this product, which is kind of why I wanted to um, get this video out as soon as possible. Uh, I'm super happy because uh, tomorrow's my birthday, so I came right before my birthday, and I can do birthday nails. So I can not only just unbox it for you, I can show you kind of how the product works as well. But there has been a little bit of drama surrounding this because I the only other video at this point that sh other than one that Susie herself has done um has been from Evie from Long Hair Pretty Nails and she did not care for the monomer in the um in the set so she she and she said that the white like yellowed and the clear also yellowed and um, that the product was really runny so I think first I'm not gonna get involved with that whole thing because I don't want that but um, I think it's fair to let you know so I'm going I'm here to give you the facts and my personal opinion now like Evie I am not a um, I'm not a nail tech yet <laughs> Hopefully someday, but I have to get through college first. So I'm not a nail tech. I am a DIYer. But I did know um, that this product is an odorless system. So, and I, I, I did have an understanding that odorless monomer works differently than regular monomer that smells. And the strong smell that most people associate with uh, monomer regular monomer is to help the curing process happen faster so the fact that you know you don't see odorless used in salons too much just because it has a slower set time already and it's typically used for like beauty schools so that you don't have like they don't have to pay for it like a crazy ventilation system or they um, just don't have people like getting high off the monomer uh, fumes all day long and they're used for state boards again for the purpose that it does not smell so let's get this unboxed it's my invoice um so this product is it's nine so it's a hundred dollars for this kit and I understand why it's that much. Some people are like, wow, that's a lot of money for a product that, for beginners. And I don't know, like, if you're invested enough in doing nails, I feel like it's never a bad thing to start, you know, with a slower setting product and to get your liquid to powder ratio right because that's something that I really had to work at. And I was buying, like, cheap products off of Amazon so and no shade to like me a secret that's what I started with but I found that I liked other acrylic systems better so you kind of have to grapple with like oh okay do you want to just spring for the more expensive thing now or do you want to go through some cheaper things end up getting to $100 and then break down and buy the $100 kit so it's kind of it's a personal thing I'm not saying you have to get it so there are four here I'll show you what this looks like so this is the box when it comes in um there are she has four colors and it looks like these pots are filled up pretty 
pretty pretty nicely so these are two ounce acrylic powder jars um, if you don't do your nails a lot this is gonna take you a while to get through me I do nails a lot I'd say I it's very unusual for me to have nails on for um, the same set anyways for more than two weeks I don't really film my nails I'm more of a fan of like all acrylic designs which is what's on my nails now um, but you know I'm gonna have to shorten my nails as I you know I'll be student teaching come fall so I need to have more like professional length nails so I want to get better at that so the colors that she gives in the kit she has a white she has a clear she has a a foundation pink which is like an opaque pink and she has like a translucent pink so this is called Susie's pink tint which is the translucent pink I have a lamp like right right here so it's kind of why I'm coming yellow here um, here is the clear powder this is Susie's clear cap it's kind of hard to see just the packaging um, this is the soft white and this is the foundation pink so as far as I know these are strength powders they are you don't need to cap them in clear I don't think there are any <laughs> design powders I would guess not um, most of the time, you know, translucent pinks, clears, whites, and, um, cover pinks are not things that you need to cap into clear, but, you know, it depends on the person, I guess. And I know she has talked about extending this line, so we'll have to just wait and see. This is the monomer. I hope it didn't spill. That's always my fear when I order any kind of monomer. No? Looks good. Okay, so. Then you get, maybe it did leak a little bit. Very, very little bit, I don't know. Could it just be condensation too? Ooh, yeah. So, my monomer did leak a little bit, and as you can see, it like wiped off the um, paint on the glass. It's on my hands now. Uh, I'm not super worked up about it. Um, yeah, so Monomer did like a little bit. They don't have it wrapped. They had it wrapped in like bubble wrap and then in this other bubble wrap. I don't know. It, as you can see, like there's still quite a bit in it. I'm not going to lose sleep over it. I, it's fine. Um, so if you can see, even though it's smeared now because of the Monomer, it says MCE Susie's Clean Acrylic Monomer. It is MMA free. It is non-yellowing. It is made in the USA, and you have four ounces of it, or 25, 125 milliliters, if that's what you choose. So, um, just be careful, I guess. Um, don't make the same mistake I did and smear it, even though it leaked a little bit. Um, I would really have liked it if they would have like put some sort of a like shrink wrap I don't know um but normally when I order monomer I can smell it through the package like my post office has kind of been like that and like now I have it on my hands and honestly it does smell clean is the best way I can put it like um this said it says on the back um, NCE high quality clean acrylic monomer should be used with NCE powders for maximum results. And then like, it's flammable so don't light it on fire, store in a cool dark area, proper ventilation, avoid inhalation, keep out in direct sunlight, um, avoid continued skin contact. So, oops. But I'll just, I'll just wash my hands and I think it'll be okay. Um, yeah, it does smell clean. So there is a scent to this monomer because, like, I think it's impossible to make a monomer that doesn't smell like something. But it doesn't have, like, a typical monomer smell. I don't even... 
I can't even like think of what this would smell like. Definitely smells like something I've smelled before. Here I am puffing this one. Um, but it does smell clean. It does not smell like chemicals. I mean, like, it kind of smells like cleaning chemicals, maybe? I don't know. Anyways, so I'm going to give you a couple of quick thoughts that I have about this initially. So you're getting eight ounces of powder with this kit. Eight ounces of powder, in my, in my personal opinion, will last you quite a while. Four ounces of monomer might not. Now, here is my, like, thing where I'm like, maybe it might. Because since odorless systems cure really slowly, you don't need as much monomer to get the perfect liquid to powder ratio with a an odorless um, monomer as you would with a regular monomer. I could be wrong. That is what I've gathered from my research. I've been, um, I've kind of been researching odorless monomer since, um, since I ordered this and it took, it took a while to get here. So I'm in Pennsylvania and I think this shipped from California. Um, now with this COVID-19 thing, like there have been things that you know, I get it. Mail comes slower. It's fine. So I ordered this like probably two weeks ago, Friday. And it came yesterday, so Saturday. So it came in about two weeks, which really isn't too bad. Exclusive Nail Couture takes a lot longer. I ordered from them almost three weeks ago and I still have not even gotten a shipping confirmation. So, but that's okay. Um... I'm really kind of sad I smeared this, which really that's probably my fault. I probably shouldn't have been like, let's wipe all this stuff off of here. Maybe it's just condensation. No, that's my fault. Um, but you have to work on the drier side with odorless monomer because the more liquid that you put into it, the more, the slower it's going to cure. And if you oversaturate it, the bead that is, so you oversaturate your brush, you put it in the powder and you pick up a bead, it's going to be too wet. And that's, I think, kind of where Evie went wrong with the application of this monomer, which, I mean, I don't completely, like, I'm not getting into it, like, involved, but um, I think you have to work with it dry. On the drier side, especially if you're used to working with regular monomer and faster setting monomer, I think you have to work with it drier than you would normally think you would. Um, I love how the monomer is Susie's like signature color. I think that's really cute. Um, her packaging is adorable. So this kit does not come with a primer or a brush. So really you are literally getting, you're getting the monomer and you're getting the four powders. Which, if you're doing your nails and you're doing them sparingly, like, not all the time, like, not every week or not even every two weeks, this is going to last you. You'll be fine. I know that she has said that she's going to come out with, like, a replacement monomer, which I really like. Um, she wants to expand her collection, and she is working on um, getting a primer out for the system, like, as soon as she can. So... Without further ado, I guess those are my initial thoughts. I mean, I'm really excited to use this. Like, I, I love how she says um, that it's for, like, the males in our lives. Because, um, like, cameraman didn't like the smell of monomer. And I think it's funny because my boyfriend really did not like the smell of monomer either. And we are in a small apartment. But, <laughs> um, he's come to, like, get used to it, I guess. He still wants to put me in a shed when we get a house, but, um, I don't know. I'm kind of interested to see how this works, and I think that this would be a really good thing for people to practice on who maybe are considering going to beauty school, because then they'll have a leg up on working with odorless monomer, and they'll kind of get all of the kinks worked out, and they can really be successful in beauty school. So, those are my initial thoughts. Um, I'm going to take these nails off and we are going to see how this works. So 
let's get to it. Okay, so I am back. I have filed off my um, previous design. Um, if you can see like in my nail, so like right there, it looks like it's really uneven. That's honestly, so that's where my cuticle was for the um, last fill. So I, that's just an unevenness of product, but my, um, it's just kind of the different levels. So like my nails are healthy, don't worry. Um, this isn't from like a file or anything. This was a straight cuticle that I um, picked off and started bleeding. So that's my own fault. So my nails are, um, they're super short. I'm totally not used to this. So I thought that I would showcase to you. Um, oh, I see it, it's on the table, let me go get it. Okay, so I thought I would showcase to you the worksheet that Susie has created to go with her acrylics. So you literally just go onto her website, you print this off, and I like it because like the fingers are like the size of an actual finger. Um, and it shows you how to, um, like what the apex should look like of different lengths. I like that. Um, has a couple of reminders. It's important to give the, the right liquid to powder ratio, create small beads rather than big beads, and cleaning the brush in between helps applications. She's got a whole bunch of guides for different shapes. There's the almond. I like that there's like the Susie, which is like um, what I would call kind of like an almanetto kind of um, color, so, or color shape. Um, and then there's designs you can practice, and the design that I'm going to be doing on my nails today is going to be the reverse, the French reverse. Um, so yeah, so okay, so I've got a clean dappen dish. Um, normally I have my acrylic liquid in this like little Menda thing, but since this isn't that much, um, you know, I'm probably not going to need that much liquid, plus I don't want to get another Menda thing because they are like 20 bucks, I thought I would just use a dappen dish. So I have just a paper towel for my liquid. I have a Luxe brush wipe from e -Nail Couture. Let me flip it over because there's kind of like brush bristles on that. Um, so what I did with my nails was I actually filled them with clear acrylic from e -Nail Couture. And the reason for that is because I, um, I have their prep and primer and Susie does not have her primer out yet. So I did not want to put just the acrylic onto my nails without a primer to go with the kit. And I didn't want to use a primer that didn't go with her kit. So what I did, I just used Eno Couture's primer and then I filled in my growth with a their clear acrylic. And then I just kind of filed it so it's really thin, it's really smooth. You can see how flat my nails are. Um, yeah, nails would not survive this. Like they're super, super thin, super thin. Like it's showing like it might be bulkier on camera, but like, I don't even know. Like I'll put my brush like underneath, like that's literally how thin it is. It's so thin. So, um, and like acrylic sticks to acrylic, no problem. So that's why I did that. Okay, so I wanna do a couple beads on this first just to kind of get a feel for how the monomer is. Um, sometimes I would do that on a, like normally if I'm working with a new monomer, I would kind of just do that on a paper towel, but since we have this worksheet here, I thought I would do that. Um, I'm not gonna put a super lot of monomer in. Um, oh, nail hack, if you want to put liquid into a dappen dish and don't wanna spill it, um, pour the liquid on the side of the brush and it's like a no spill way so you don't waste your monomer. Okay. So that's really not a lot. Like it barely looks like I used any. I'm gonna put that lid on nice and tight and I'm just gonna wipe my brush. Um, this, kind of, this brush does like kind of shed a little bit, but that's just, it comes with it as it works. You know, it's fine. I'm not like super duper worried about it. Okay, so I don't have a ton of monomer, but that's what I have. So I'm going to, I'm gonna go for the square. And I think I'm gonna use 
the, um, the foundation pink that Susie has. So let's open this baby up. Okay, so it is sealed. That's good to know. Jesus, hand. Okay, so these are filled up pretty nicely. So I am going to, I want to show you how I pick up the bead. Okay, so I'm just kind of like dunking my brush into the monomer. But since this is an odorless monomer, and it is odorless, I'm sitting here and I can't smell anything. Now, if I put my nose up to the bottle or to the, you know, Zappen dish, I would probably be able to smell something. So I'm just kind of going to get my brush saturated in this monomer. And so you see how big my brush is with monomer? It's even dripping in there. So I'm going to wipe it off the side of the Dappen dish. I'm gonna wipe it three times and then I'm gonna put it in the powder, just the tip of the brush. And I'm gonna hold it in there for a couple of seconds. See, to me, this looks like a really dry bead, but sometimes um, I think that's kind of how odorless acrylic needs to be worked. So. It released from my brush really well. I'm just gonna put it on this piece of paper. Okay, so it's got a nice workability. So I'm, you can see that I'm wiping my brush off a lot because I wanna get rid of the um, monomer that's in it. So you can see it's kind of spreading um, and the liquid is spreading, but it feels really nice to work with. It doesn't feel like it's super runny. Um, yeah, I really, this, this is really good. I like this. I love that she has like two different lengths of the shape for, for reference. So yeah, um, this would be a good bead because it doesn't really seem to be going anywhere and I have pretty good control of it. Um, I feel like this would be a good bead. You can see like the monomer kind of like of course it's on paper, so it's gonna like squish out because it's monomer. Um, I wanna see if I can get a really tiny bead for the um, cuticle area, cuticle air quotes, cuticle area. So I'm just gonna dunk the tip of my brush into the monomer and I'm gonna wipe, again, I wiped twice off my, the onto the thing with the monomer and I'm just gonna hold it in there for a couple of seconds. Okay, so I did get a smaller bead. So these look super um, wet and then I release it and I'm going to wipe my brush off. I'm just kind of patting and pulling and that bead is really staying where I put it. So I guess either I have really good liquid to powder ratio or this product is super good or both. Um, it's still, and even like, you can tell the first bead that I did, it's still pretty pliable. So, yeah. Um, so I don't tip that over, that's just what I would probably do. So you can see, this is what I did. The nail that I created, per se. Now given, this is not, definitely not, like, it doesn't have an apex. It's just, I covered what the nail would be. And you know, um, I think it would be a good idea if you would like, if you didn't want this to happen, like on the paper, but I don't really care. Um, you could just get a, um, like you could laminate it or get like a little folder, like a protector kind of thing that you would use, like a cover protector for a paper, cover sheet, I don't know. So I'm just kind of tidying it up. Um, it's obviously not cured yet. I can see it's still really shiny. So this is not totally executable. That's okay. I'm not looking for perfection here, but I'm just kind of showing you how this works. So the product does work nice. It has a pretty good workability, but you do have to work dry. So you saw how little liquid I had in my brush. And I think that's what Susie wants because I know that she thinks that there's a, um, a big problem in the industry with people like techs using too much monitor, no matter how much experience they have. And I was a little bit worried. I'm not going to lie about 
me being able to get a good bead because that's pretty imperative that a bead stays where you put it for you to do a reverse smile line or a smile line of any kind. So I'm just gonna let that cure. Um, it is 6.35 and I put that down, we'll say three minutes ago. So I'm gonna sit here and I'm going to wait for it to cure and I'm going to see if it has like a tacky layer uh, before we get started on my actual nails. So stay tuned. Alrighty, so it is now 6.45 and this one up here, um, it's sounding like it's cured. Uh, it can't, I can't really tell with these because like, I don't know, um, they're really light so I, yeah, it's just, but my acrylic nail is clicking on it and it's good, but while I was um, waiting for it to cure. So it did take about, I would say it took almost 10 minutes. I mean, and it could have been cured a minute or two before. So it took about eight minutes from when I stopped messing with it for it to be like, okay to do. I don't know. Um, I definitely had a lot of working time, but I also now did this one and it has not. So I haven't messed with this in about two minutes and it has stayed where I put it. Like it has stopped moving. And that entire time I was constantly, constantly wiping my brush off onto this towel. So I think we are now ready to, and you can see that like the white isn't, the white's not yellow, which I know was a big problem with um, the other review and some, some people thought that the acrylic yellowed but I haven't seen that and it does have a slight tacky layer. So what Susie said she recommended was that you run your hands under hot water for a couple of minutes or warm water um, and that will take the tacky layer away without you having to um, file it away and you can kind of keep that like that you can keep the um, acrylic that you put on there. So. Um, people, what I had heard the advice was that you want to apply your acrylic a little bit thicker when you're using odorless because you would file away the tacky layer and it's kind of gummy and it rolls off. So then your nail would be thinner than you would want it to be. So that's what people said, but I, apparently Susie says if you can, um, that you can put it, you can put the, um, you can put your hands under warm water. I don't know, my words lost me there. Um, so I'm really not thinking I'm gonna need a whole lot of monomer for this, but um, I haven't quite got the, I don't wanna say the ratio, but the ratio for different size beads yet. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna do my reverse French smile line. And when you're doing this, you want, to like you want to lay your pink down first so when you're doing reverse you lay your pink down first and then I'm gonna leave it and then I'm gonna file it really crisp but honestly you know I might not need to because depending on how um you know I have a long time to work with these acrylics I might be able to get the smile line really crisp with just my brush so all right so I'm going to kind of just press my brush on the side of my Dappen dish. And I am using Susie's um, number eight brush. So pressing it, I'm gonna wipe one. I'm gonna wipe twice, pretty, pretty solid wipes. To, um, and then I'm gonna hold it in the powder. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. That looks like a pretty good bead, but I'm actually going to drain it still out on my brush. So you just put the back of your brush onto the towel and there's my bead. I have to flip my brush around to. So the reason I got a bigger bead was because I do want the smile line to be thicker towards the top. 
so that I can bud my white up to it. This is a really nice consistency. I really like the consistency. Yeah, it's not, it's really staying put. It's not like running away from me. I'm able to really, really play with it. Um, I'm just going to push it down on this side, make sure it stays tidy on this side because acrylic is self-leveling so it's gonna fall like it's not gonna stay exactly where you put it all the time it's not like poly gel but I'm gonna make my make my way down on this side here because I want my wings to be nice and crisp um, I like a deeper smile line that's just my personal opinion that is my personal um, liking. You could do a straighter smile line. You could do this however you want. And I'm really having a lot of time to play with it, which I like. I feel like I might not even have to file this. Now, my natural nail on my um, index finger, is it's got a pretty nice smile line on its own. So I've got a good guide on this finger, which is kind of why I started here. So I'm just gonna keep, I hope I'm in shot. Oh my gosh, I would die if I wasn't in shot. Not actually, but you know. So you can see it's, it looks thick. It looks thick right now. But I'm making it thick so that I can bud my white up against it and have some room to file. And really, when you're doing um, short nails, they do not need to be thick at all. Not at all. Okay, so I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna go in with a little bead at the cuticle. But that bead is putting, so I'm done playing with that one. And it's, play, it's staying pretty much where I put it. So I'm debating whether I should put that bead at the cuticle. Maybe, okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do the smile line part on all of my nails. And then I'm gonna come back, I'm gonna do the cuticle bead. I wanna give this a little bit of time to set up so I don't wreck it, because I'm really happy with that smile line. Um, I still might file it, haven't decided yet. So let's just go in here. So I'm putting my brush up against my dab and dish gonna wipe off one two hold up see I have a hair there on my brush we don't want that yeah and this brush didn't start shedding until like just like a few weeks ago like it was fine for the lot for the longest time it's another hair it's in my bummer whatever okay so I'm pressing it and then I'm gonna do one nice swipe two Gonna hold the tip in my powder. Three, four, five. I'm gonna hold it in there just a couple more seconds. Okay, that looks like a pretty nice bead. I'm gonna drain it. Really get all of that liquid out. I'm gonna put it. And that is a nice bead. I really like that bead, that's a good bead. I'm gonna make sure all the liquid's out of my brush. I'm gonna wipe it out. And that bead was really just really waiting until I told it kind of where to go. So, yeah. I think that there's a learning curve with odorless monomer. But um, people say it's like really greasy to work with. I am not getting that from this product. Um, I don't know. Could be that the greasiness kind of comes later. I'm not sure.
Okay, so um, I went and I got all of the like smile line portions of my nails done and I'm going to do the cuticle bead and then I'm going to kind of see if I need to build up the smile line portion anymore on any of my nails. This one's still a little bit wet, but these ones have all kind of like started to cure. Um, this one and this one I think are pretty much fully cured, but I don't want to like run them underwater and start to file them until all of the whole part of it is done. So I am going to do that. I'm going to get a smaller bead. So I'm just going to tap on the side of my dabbing dish and wipe one, two, three. Then I'm going to hold one, two, three, four, five, and I'm going to check it. Maybe one more. Okay, that looks good. Okay, so I have um, filed these. These are cured. I filed, I didn't file the top. I filed the, just around the smile line to make them really crisp and uniform and even. So um, I did run them underwater for like maybe a minute and a half or two minutes and like they still have a little bit of a tacky layer on them. I don't know. I just didn't find, I just kind of did it until I was like, okay, I guess this is good enough. Um, because I don't think there's any point in me like removing the tacky layer all of it right now because I'm going to put white on it and that's going to be tacky too. So I did um, do a little experiment with this um, paper towel. Um, I did this experiment with just, I did these two beads of white really... Um, kind of like wetter and like they're still pretty shiny and like I don't think they're fully cured but then I did this one in like a correct ratio I'm trying to see if these ones yellow and I like I guess I can see these ones are kind of becoming a little bit more off-white than this one but we do have to remember that this is a soft white like here it says it even says on the jar like Susie's soft white so the reason she made this was because she wanted it to be like, not milky, but like soft enough that you could do like a French fade or like a baby boomer, but you could still do a French manicure with it like this and it would still look nice. Um, I was kind of looking at the like um, cover pink and it does look a little bit more peachy than eternal beige. Like I have eternal beige on this finger. And on my thumb, here, on my thumb, some, like, this stuff is coming off, but, like, you can kind of see that this is, like, more coral toned almost, more pinky, this is, like, more peach, so, I don't know, I kind of like this, but, um, I'm gonna do the white now, and with white, I always have trouble with any kind of white acrylic, that's just me, like, I always have trouble with white acrylic, so I'm just gonna get my brush, and I'm gonna get it really dry, 
like I'm wiping off like five times. I really don't want much liquid in there. And I'm gonna get a bead. Six, eight. Like you really wanna work with white dry anyways. And I'm gonna drain it. And then I'm gonna put it. And with the reverse method, it's nice because you don't really have to worry about where you're putting your white. You do when you're doing the um, like traditional French method. Like it can go over the pink, which I usually like do that just to make sure that I'm getting it in like every crevice that I need to. Yeah, Nor so I normally have issues with white. Um, that's not really exclusive to this video or this product. I just hate white acrylic, but it's kind of necessary if you're doing a French, so. I've just kind of been dying to have a French manicure, like a short, cute French manicure. So I'm gonna make sure that it's all the way down like into the wings of this. I'm wiping my brush off constantly. I don't think I can stress that enough, like constantly wiping off my brush. I'm still probably gonna need a little bit on that little wing. I'm just kinda waiting for this to cure up a little. I know it's kinda hard to see this side. Usually when I do my nails, I kind of am bending all different ways, but no. Do it for the, not gram, but do it for the tube, I guess. Do it for the YouTube. Um, okay, so I'm going to just kind of brush this back to make it even, and hopefully I can get a little bit more product back here where I need it. Yeah, that's nice. Okay, so it looks really thick and bulky right now, but I think it will turn out okay once I file down the apex, because like, look at that, like you don't need that high of an apex really for a nail this short, like it's just not. You, you don't. And the only reason I had it that high was so I could shove the white up against the pink and it would be like, okay.
Okie dokie. So these are cured. I don't really remember when I um, left them to start curing. It's probably been about 10 minutes. I just kind of like went on my phone for a little bit, you know, whatever. Um, they're not looking super yellow to me. Um, this piece of um, or, uh, t bath tissue, or not bath tissue, jeez. Um, this piece of t paper towel, like, it does kind of look like these ones yellowed. This one, not so much. Like, you can kind of see they're different colors. And then, like, the paper towel around it is yellow. So, like, the monomer yellowed while it was, like, sitting out. So, like, I definitely could see why if you had really, like, a lot of, um, if you had a lot of monomer on your brush or were working with constantly wet beads, I could see how that would yellow. And it would be... I don't know kind of be an issue like I think the issue with the video that came out with the yellowing of the nails or of the acrylic was that Evie used a regular monomer glam and glitz um on her thumb at first or like well after she had done all the other nails with Susie's monomer and here's the thing that glam and glitz monomer and because I, I have it it's purple so monomers that are fast setting a lot of times are formulated purple because they help brighten the white so i think that it made the white honestly brighter than it's meant to be with this monomer because it is supposed to be a soft white so i think that that kind of like made the stark difference that was seen on that video a little bit worse just because that monomer was purple and that's the whole point of purple monomer is to make um, like clear acrylic not and white acrylic not yellow. That's the whole point. So I'm not seeing that this is really yellowing. Um, I ran these three under water for like a minute and a half, two minutes. Again, I'm impatient. It doesn't seem like it's really tacky or gummy anymore. I don't know if that could be, that could change. These are still tacky. And when I say tacky, I don't mean super tacky. It's not even as tacky as gel polish. Like I thought it was gonna be as sticky as gel polish, not the case. Um, definitely not as sticky as builder gel, which is why I don't tend to like to work with it. So I'm just gonna like go in to file these nails. Um, I'm using my Fantastic File with an 80 grit. Yeah, I can kind of see that there's like, it's gumming up a little bit which I expected. I just kind of wanted to see if I, if there was any difference in these two after I, um, like, didn't run them underwater. Yeah, you can even tell, like, once you kind of file it a little bit, like, it gets whiter. I don't know if you can see that. Like, it's a little bit whiter. Maybe not. Okay, so I'm gonna file these. Um, they're super thick, that ain't cute. So we're gonna file them down to be thin and how I want them. And I will be back. All right, so I'm just gonna show you this sped through filing cause I, you guys have been here. If you stuck with me this, this long, you deserve a medal. Um, I just kind of wanted to give my final thoughts on this product. I do apologize that the video is so long. I'm going to leave timestamps below. There is no need for you to watch the whole thing if you don't want to, but I just kind of wanted to show how it worked from a person who, you know, wasn't the creator of it because, you know, there really aren't too many tutorials of this product out there. And the one that I saw a lot of people had a lot of mixed feelings about. So, you know, I just kind of wanted to post my experience so that some people have, you know, a little bit more of a reference point to go off of. Um, and I just want to say that, like, I, when I did this hand, I got a little file happy, and I think I filed the nails a little too thin, or I did the um, top, or I did the clear layer underneath my nails, maybe a little bit too thick. Maybe I should have thinned them down a little bit. So the 
pink acrylic looks a little bit patchy when you kind of put the top coat on and there are some air bubbles in the white which I'm really not used to with regular acrylic so um, I think that's just you know that's a technique thing that's something that's gonna have to kind of come with the learning curve for odorless systems because they do work differently than a regular acrylic but I do think my my final thoughts on this product is I do think this would be good for beginners because it almost forces you to consistently get the correct ratio of bead on your brush and it's nice it's not odorless do I don't think that the you know fi the gummy layer or the tacky layer on top is a big deal it didn't like stop me from you know filing it. It didn't like cost me a lot of time. I was, it, it takes me a long time to do my own nails anyways. What I recommend doing, using this system on a client, I mean, you can if you're first learning. I personally don't. I think I would just because it takes quite a while to cure, but the fact that it takes a long time to cure works to my advantage especially when I do my non-dominant hand so right now you know I'm using my dominant hand I'm right-handed to do these and the pictures that I show you afterwards are actually of my right hand so they were the ones that I did with my left hand because I think they had a little bit of a better result I just did a thin little um like line in between the pink and the white like a little thin strip of glitter following the smile line shape just to add a little bit of a something something to it um jazz it up a little bit didn't really want to put stones on these I thought they were pretty nice just simple the way they were um so yeah the reveal picture at the end is of my right hand right here this is my right hand um I top coated with shiny top coat I cured for 60 seconds and so that's the end of the video I hope that you guys um, found some value in this I really I do recommend this product I recommend Susie's clean acrylic kit um, be sure to like this video comment down below if you have any questions and please subscribe to my channel thanks so much stay safe bye